Okay, uh, remember Trevor Chapel? Bowled underarm along the ground, couldn't hit the ball for six, so we saw a Trevor Chapel game of rugby today. So it wasn't a game of rugby, we still haven't played a game, so we might go out and train now if you want to come watch it, come watch it, because we haven't played rugby yet. Uh, congratulations to Italy, I thought they were brilliant in the execution, but if that's rugby then I'm going to retire. That's not rugby. Like, your halfback can't pass the ball, then there's something wrong with the game. So we lost the ruck from the game, and when you lose a primary contest from the game, it changes the game considerably, and, it's, and it ceases to become rugby. So if you paid for your ticket, ask for your money back. I'm not going to answer any questions on rugby, so I'm happy to answer anything else because there wasn't any rugby today. I'm not critical of our side at all because we didn't play rugby. It ceased to be a game of rugby, and we practiced for a game of rugby all week, and we didn't get it. Andy, that tactics you used before by the Chiefs in the Super Rugby, do you think maybe you could have prepared for it now? Prepared not to play rugby. Do you think you could have prepared? Yeah, no, it's my fault, mate. You're 100% right. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. I should have had a week doing 10 pin bowling or something. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got it wrong. Yeah, 100%. You're right. I don't want to be involved in those sort of games. I'd rather go home, pick up my stumps, put them in the kit bag, and go home. Yeah, well, they're the benchmarks of European rugby. They've won the last two Six Nations. Yeah, they've got a central contracting system so they can bring players in. They know where they're up to. They've got control over their fitness. Yeah, they're in, they're in a good situation. They've still got some of their key players there. Yeah, Sexton's an interesting one. Yeah, they've talked about him having whiplash injuries, yeah, which is not a great thing to talk about. I'm sure his mother and father would be worried about that. Yeah, so hopefully the, the lad's right on, on Saturday to play. I don't know about France, mate. You'd have to ask the French coach. Would you Go and ask the French coach, mate. Would you target well, we, tar we target players all the time. That's part of rugby, isn't it? It's not? Absolutely. Is it legitimate to target a fly half in particular? I didn't know 10 had any special requirements. <laughs> oh, is there some sort of special law, is there? Let me know. No, well, you... Well, there's 15 players out there. What, are we supposed to not run at one player? Hang on, hang on, he's got a red dot on his head, we don't run at him. Did you make special dispensation for a number 10 because of his playmaking knock? I, I don't understand the question, mate. Obviously, it's a different rugby here. Like, rugby, there's 15 players on the field. If you've got a weak defender there, you run at him. Why wouldn't you? Do you think Johnny Sexton's weak defensively? I'm not commenting on Johnny, mate. So can I just get back to that Sexton question? Yeah, I think that's a really silly question. You know, rugby's a game of 15 players on the, on the field. You know, you run, when we're attacking, we're attacking weak defenders. We're looking for weak defenders. Why would we run at the strongest defenders? So if Martin's there and, and sorry, what's your name? Nick. Nick, and Nick's there. We're not going to run a Martin, are we? <laughs> <laughs> no, you you no. never saw him play, mate. You clearly never saw me play. Anyway. Well, maybe, maybe. <laughs> we're going to run at Nick or... Or this bloke here. Maybe we'll run at this bloke here. We're not going to run at their strongest defenders. We always run at their weak defenders. Now, I'm not saying Sexton's a weak defender. Maybe France did. But we're going to be targeting players in the island side because we want, to, we want to win. And you win a game of rugby by attacking their weak points. And to say that's unfair is just ridiculous. And you shouldn't be asking those questions. I don't think anyone said it was unfair. It was just a question. No, no, no. The question was whether it's legitimate or not. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a great question to ask at all. Well, I think it's stupid. <laughs> Sorry. Well, we agree to disagree. Yeah. Okay. Why should I, mate? Well, you can give your opinion, mate. The referee's adjudicator on it. If I say something about the referee, then the, then the headline tomorrow is Jones complains about the referee. So I'm not going to give an opinion, mate. I definitely did, mate. Uh, I'm not going to tell you, mate. <laughs> I've, I'm, from this press conference onwards, I'm putting a media ban on myself. Because I don't want to do any scaremongering. I don't want to do anything that offends the media or offends people's parents. So from here until next the Friday before the Wales game, I'm not talking to the media. So you won't have to worry about that scaremongering and all this sort of thing. Well, mate, if I don't say anything, if I don't say anything, you come away from the press conference and say it's boring. If I say something, then I'm scaremongering. So I can't win.
So the easiest way is I don't come to press conferences. I don't regret anything, mate. I don't regret anything. Why would I regret it? Well, you've probably had uh, three or four days now to reflect on uh, the water polo match in Hong Kong. Uh, yeah. How do you look at it now? Because I know at the time you were a little bit, uh, a little bit irate that the game got called off. Uh, not much difference, mate. Not much difference. So I, I just find it very disappointing. It's a, ga- you know, it's a game of rugby. We all went there to play rugby. Hong Kong guys went there to play rugby, and within eight minutes of the game, we got people trying to stop the game. Yeah, I just find it unbelievable, mate. It's a winter sport. Yeah, it's a, it's a winter sport, but it, it didn't feel like winter. It was about 32 degrees and f***ing rain. Yeah, but you're supposed to play in rain. That's the whole thing. Did you? We played a game two years ago in Fiji, and the conditions were far worse. Fiji wanted to play, we wanted to play, and we played. Yeah. Did you have any idea before the game uh, from the refs that uh, there was a chance that a decision would need to be made? Well, I could tell before the game the ref was nervous. So the problem was the ref was nervous and Hong Kong really didn't want to play. What? Now, I can understand from Hong Kong point of view, yeah, they get two points, they come second in the Asian Rugby Championship. So the ends justify the means. Yeah, we, we had uh, earlier on the show today uh, Andy Hall, uh, Hong Kong coach, yeah. and he said it's a very hollow victory. There's nothing. They don't take anything out of that at all. Um, but uh, I guess Japan had a lot, to, a lot to lose there. I guess they don't even put an asterisk against this game because that's the end, I think, of a 12-match uh, winning streak over Hong Kong, and you've dropped a couple of clicks in the rankings. Does that roll you up even more? Well, it's unbelievable, mate. So we don't lose a game and we go down in the world rankings. That shows you just how much little thought was put in, put into cancelling the game. Yeah. Like, it's, it's bloody incredible, mate. It's, I've had enough of Asian rugby, mate. I'm never going to Hong Kong again to play rugby. That's it, mate. <laughs> and I mean it. Seriously, mate. I'll go there to shop or eat dumb sum, but I'm not going there for rugby. It's a bloody joke, mate. Yeah, I can I can appreciate that, mate. And not just you. Absolute I think, joke. Yeah, everyone that went along there on Saturday was off you know the crowd the fans the players and uh, we definitely feel uh, where you're coming from mate it was uh, it was a joke and as you said in the media uh, disappointing for you because you wanted to give a couple of players a few players a last look uh, before you sort of make your squad decisions for Pacific Nations Cup yeah look you know we deliberately picked the weaker side you know a lot of those guys were probably third or fourth team members so it was a real opportunity for them to play and that's the thing I find about Hong Kong, mate. They're playing our weakest team in the worst conditions. They could have had their best result against... Yeah, I know that, that they, uh, they they definitely thought they had a chance of keeping you under 29 to take second spot. Uh, that was, I think that was definitely one of their objectives. Uh, no winners on, on, uh, on Saturday, mate. The rugby certainly wasn't. Yeah, yeah, bit of a... Well, mate... Um, didn't get to see you, but uh, good luck in the Pacific Nations Cup. Right. And um, <laughs> thanks for flying the flag for Asia in the World Cup, mate. I'm, the Hong Kong's right. right behind Japan. Okay, thanks, mate. Next time I'm coming, I'm just eating dim sims there, mate. Nothing else. <laughs> give no me, racing, mate. Give me so a call. Me a dim sim restaurant. Give me a call. We'll take you to breakfast. All right, good man. I'll take you up on that. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Cheers, Eddie. Bye-bye. <laughs>